Thank you. The next item of business is an urgent question, and I call Graeme Simpson. Many thanks. To ask the Scottish Government what provisions it is making for Scotland fans to get home after tonight's Nations League match at Hampden against Armenia, in light of the reported announcement by ScotRail that they should leave early if they want to catch a train. Minister Jenny Gilbreth. Presiding officer, ScotRail trains are responsible for operational planning and will always seek to provide the best service possible. However, they have advised that on this occasion it has not been possible to provide more than the reduced timetable. I know this will be deeply frustrating for fans travelling to the Armenia match tonight. Now, as the member knows, rail services and especially any additional services to support special events rely, of course, on rest day working. Rest day working is voluntary and relying on drivers working on the rest day is not sustainable, not for them and not for our rail service. Now, as left, the Train Drivers Union is currently involved in a dispute with ScotRail in relation to pay. That is not formal industrial action, but it is true that drivers are choosing not to work on their rest days. That is a right, presiding officer, and I respect that. But the reality is that this has made timetabling for tonight's match incredibly challenging for ScotRail, and as such, they have not been able to run an enhanced service, as was the case last week. Now, as members will be aware, ASLEF opted not to present ScotRail's offer to its members after they met last week. ScotRail has already indicated its disappointment and its frustration at that situation. I understand that the parties, however, are due to meet again tomorrow, and I await an update to that end. Clearly, we would all like to see the current pay negotiations settled so we can get back to providing a full rail service for passengers everywhere. Graeme Simpson. So the answer is there are no provisions. Football fans have been used to leaving matches early to beat the rush. In this case, they have been told to leave early because there is no rush. There are no trains. Can the Minister just agree with me that this situation is not acceptable and would you like to apologise to the Tartan Army? Minister. I thank the member for his supplementary question. The temporary timetable that ScotRail has implemented at the moment gives a, a more stable and reliable service for passengers. Now, we know people want certainty when they travel. ScotRail has therefore looked at how best to give as much certainty as it can during what, which, as we know, has been a very challenging period for passengers. Now, traditionally, ScotRail do carry far more supporters to Hamden Games than return, so approximately 7,000 fans travelled to the Ukraine match last week, only 2,500 travelled back, as generally uh, fans prefer to walk back to the city centre. It's also worth saying that the crowd tonight is expected to be far smaller than the Ukraine game. And it's also worth saying that the six unadvertised buses held on standby at Central Station to support any onward travel issues after the Ukraine match last week were not used. ScotRail have advised that there is not sufficient bus capacity available to support uh, transport of the crowds from Hamden to Glasgow that a high capacity rail service would accommodate and replacement buses are procured to, substant, uh, to substitute rather, for planned or unplanned disruption, leaving no gaps um, in relation to the reduced timetable. But to do so across the network at the current time would require an enormous fleet of buses at significant expense. So if last week's 2,500 supporters, for example, returned to Glasgow was to be replicated, this would require a fleet of some 50 buses, which would create its own transport issues in and around Hamden. But, given the wider industrial dispute announced yesterday, it is clear that rail users right across the UK will be facing serious disruption. That is not of this government's making. The answer to this is to resolve the dispute. And to that end, I look forward to discussing this matter with ScotRail after they meet with ASLEF tomorrow. We all want to see a resolution to this dispute, not just for the passengers who will be travelling to the football match today, but everyone in Scotland who uses our rail service. Graeme Simpson. Well, my word. So the Minister's answer to football fans tonight is walk. Walk to the city centre. That's her answer, because yeah. there's, there's no other alternative, yeah. unless, you've ta unless you've taken your own car. Yeah. Um, I am encouraged that there are going to be talks tomorrow. Um, I know the Minister hasn't uh, bothered to dirty her hands with, uh, getting involved with the talks so far, but can she tell us how confident she is that this situation well, will be resolved tomorrow and that we don't have a summer of chaos. Minister. Setting aside the member's use of language, presiding officer, I remind the member that I am not in the negotiating room. It is appropriate for ScotRail, the employer, employers, to negotiate directly with the trade union to that end. That is how we resolve industrial disputes. However, 
Um, in relation to the ongoing dispute, it is important we get to a resolution. I agree with the member to that end. Um, in terms of uh, the ongoing challenges that are faced, I will seek an update from ScotRail to that end later today. And I think it is also important to reflect on the use of rest day working, which is not a new feature, which occurred on the, the 1st of April. It's been a feature of our railways for many, many years. Some in our railways may view it as an outdated concept. And these are conversations I would like to take forward with our trade union partners to that end. But I would invite Mr Simpson to review his own party's uh, engagement with the trade unions. And I think his colleague Grant Shapps, who said last week that the UK government was actively drawing up legislation to ban trade unions from going on strike. And as the TUC General Secretary has noted, it appears that the Conservatives are looking to pick a fight with the rail unions. Now, the Scottish Government works with our trade union partners. We understand fair work principles and we advocate for our, our trade unions. And on that note, I'm very much looking forward to working with our railway unions to discuss our national conversation on public ownership of Scotland's railways and how they can be part of moving that vision forward. And I'll take uh, some supplementaries first from Neil Bibby. Thank you, President Officer. The Scottish Government have given Abellio a contract to provide rail replacement buses, but it appears yet again there are no rail replacement bus services tonight to get fans home from Hamden. The Minister refused yesterday to say how much Abellio are getting paid, but what exactly are Abellio getting paid to do? The Minister has said there is a shortage of buses to provide a rail replacement bus service, but they are not providing any buses to help passengers with this disruption. Is the government's position seriously that there are no buses anywhere in Scotland that could be used to provide a rail replacement bus service tonight for, Hamd for fans from Hamden? Minister. So this matter was raised yesterday at Topical Questions in relation to the four Abellio contracts which have continued over to allow for consistency moving into public ownership from April the 1st. And it is the case that ScotRail has confirmed that securing those rail replacement uh, buses has provided significantly more challenging than prior to the pandemic. And a fall in the number of those available bus and taxi drivers, coinciding of course with greater demand as the economy has opened up in relation to COVID, has meant there is less availability across the country. And there are a number of staffing pressures facing our bus operators at the moment, not least COVID, and of course Brexit, which I believe Mr Bibby's party now seems to support. We are already seeing bus operators having to make some really challenging uh, decisions around about where they're able to provide services. I have asked ScotRail to at all times consider whether or not they're able to provide rail replacement services. On this occasion, they tell me that's not been the case. Supplementary Bill Kidd. Thank you, President Officer. Um, as we all know, ScotRail's temporary revised timetable is only one facet of industrial disputes taking place throughout the UK. Yeah. While the Scottish Government wants all parties to get around the table and negotiate a fair and affordable pay deal, the Tories, it would seem, would rather use the dispute between RMT and UK Network Rail to criminalise industrial action. That dispute will have a detrimental effect on impact on events like football matches, as we now know. So can I ask what discussions the Minister has had or is going to have with Grant Shapps regarding the UK Government's intended course of action for improving industrial relations in the rail sector? Minister. Well, as I have uh, reiterated today, unlike the Tories at Westminster, this Government supports fair work. and We support the principle and the practice of trade unions and the right of people to join a, a trade union. I am not surprised to hear the Conservatives ramping up their anti-union rhetoric. But to be clear, that has no support from this Government, and it could not be further from our approach to including and involving our trade unions in our work, including in how we take forward Scotland's railways. Now, I continue to engage uh, with ScotRail, and uh, they are engaging with ASLIS, of course, later this week, and the RMT, to get back around the table and to resolve this current dispute. Parties are working together to reach a resolution, whereas the UK Government appears to want to make industrial action illegal. I have already written to Grant Shapps, making this Government's view clear on its approach to the uh, network rail dispute. I have also written to Network Rail to express this Government's concerns surrounding any proposals for redundancies arising out of these proposals, which would not, we would not, of course, support. I know that this was welcomed by the RMT at the time. So I will reiterate today, I am appalled that Network Rail employees have had no pay rise for the last two years. It's not acceptable, and nor does it make any economic sense for Network Rail disputes to uh, continue to that end. We can only conclude this is being done for political or ideological purposes, and based on what was reported over the course of last weekend, that uh, is now clearly bearing fruit. And supplementary, Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Now, in response to my questioning in committee, the Minister told me that the key, indeed the sole change from nationalisation, was that she would be accountable. So, does the Minister recognise the concerns of people 
who might think that in refusing to step into this situation, she's abdicating that accountability. Minister. I say to the member, I am accountable. I'm here today answering an urgent question. I was here yesterday answering a topical question on rail. I was here the week before answering a question on rail. And the week before that, he has absolute accountability um, minister, for me minister, as minister, the minister, 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 However, minister, However, minister, please resume your seat. Okay. I, I would just like a bit of calm from all parts of the chamber so that we can hear the answer to the question that the member asked. Minister, please continue. Presiding officer, as I outlined, uh, I think in response to Mr Simpson, it would not be appropriate for me as minister to be in the negotiating room. No ministers, uh, to my mind, are ever in the negotiating room. It is appropriate in this instance for ScotRail to be in the negotiating room as the employer with our trade union partners. And I look forward to them reaching a resolution so we can restore ScotRail's full timetable for the benefit of passengers and staff alike. Thank you. That concludes the urgent question and we will move on to the next side of business, but we will have a very short pause to allow front bench teams to take their positions. Thank you. <laughs>